I wrote Muhammad for several reasons, but one thing that has always fascinated me is the nature of uh, divine revelation. You know, all the scriptures of all the worlds come through what is called divine revelation, whether it's the Vedas, whether it's the Torah, whether it is uh, the New Testament, uh, gospel, so to speak, uh, the Quran, and uh, of course the revelation is through a human nervous system, always. Somebody's got to write it down. Uh, and yet, uh, if it is revelatory, the material, then it speaks to the soul. And so I'm particularly fascinated by how that happens. How does somebody like Muhammad, for example, who is uh, illiterate, who cannot read or write, who has never engaged in poetry or song, who has led a very ordinary life, that of a businessman. Of course, he is um, introspective and given to solitude. Uh, how does he suddenly in a cave hear the words from the mouth of the angel Gabriel? They're powerful words. Recite in the name of your Lord who created life from congealed drops of blood. Recite for your Lord is ever bountiful. He who teaches by the pen, who taught mankind what was not known before. These are the words of Muhammad, is Muhammad's revelation. The word Quran literally means recite. So, you know, when I wrote the book, um, I was thinking, uh, how should I introduce this book? And I introduced it with a prelude called The Angel of Revelation. And I'm going to read a bit from that. How much? Um, maybe a page and a half. The Angel of Revelation. A mule can go to Mecca, but that doesn't make him a pilgrim. God didn't put those words in my mouth. He could have. He has a sense of humor. Those are Arabs' words. They are a people of many words. A flood that could float Noah's ark. If you're a stranger, you might not see that. You'd be blinded by the desert sun that bleaches bones and minds alike. So this is the angel of Revelation, Gabriel speaking. The sun takes on other tasks, drying up water holes that ran full just last year, starving the whole crop of spring lambs when the grass became parched and withered, driving nomads in desperation to seek green pastures. And when they got there, the sun glistened off fresh blood because other tribes who would die without their pastures lay in wait to kill the nomads. But the Arabs refused to give up. Let's turn it all into a story, they said. The cure for misery is a song. There are other cures, but no one had the money to buy them. And so they set out to turn starvation into a heroic adventure. Thirst became a muse, the threat of murder caused to boast of their bravery. Arabs and God had in common this love of words. So when he heard, so when he heard a man say, in the depth of his heart, and that was Muhammad of course, God loves every people on earth but the Arabs. It was fitting that I, Gabriel, should appear with one command, recite. So that's how the Quran came to be. In fact, the root word of the Quran is recite.